Daisy Shu, a postdoc researcher at Harvard Shepin's Eye Research Institute, uses social media to share her research life. Daisy's PhD thesis explores how cataracts are formed and how we can prevent it from forming from a molecular biology perspective. Now, she's made the journey from Sydney, Australia to Boston to research diseases of the retina. In our interview, she discusses her social media journey, from first hearing Hugh Kern speak to starting her popular Instagram channel in October. I love featuring academics like Daisy. She's awesome at sharing what she does with her social media audiences, and she has some great advice for you. Hi, Daisy. Welcome to The Social Academic. Tell me a bit about you. Hi, Jen. Um... I am a PhD student that just submitted um, my thesis and um, I did that in cataract research. So I'm particularly interested in how eye diseases develop and how we can find uh, novel means of preventing them from forming. Um, and just as I submitted, I made my way over to Boston um, from Sydney and I'm starting my postdoc now at Harvard um, at an institute called Scapin's Eye Research Institute. And now I'm looking at diseases of the retina. Okay, so a little bit of a transition into a, a new role, a new area, and also new research. Yeah, yeah, it's um, been pretty difficult adjusting to the climate over here in Boston. <laughs> um, but aside from that, uh, everyone in the lab has been really welcoming. Um, so it's been really quite easy to transition into this new role. Oh, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, it's been really great. And do you like the area? I bet it was a, a big move from Sydney. Yeah, definitely. Um, Boston is actually a really nice city. It's, it's quite a small city, so it's easy to make your way around uh, places. And Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a surprisingly small. Um, so you don't really need a car to get around. Um, and yeah, like everyone's really nice here. And the, yeah, I really like um, sort of just all the history about this place. It's actually uh, one of the oldest cities in America, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I grew up uh, right outside of Boston. So I was excited when I saw that you were, you were headed there. So I'd love to hear about how you started using social media to talk about your work and your research. Um, well, I... I actually uh, was inspired by this one talk that I heard uh, in the first year of my PhD by Hugh Kearns, and he's an Australian researcher who really likes to promote um, science communication via social media. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he, he actually really inspired it. Um, so after that talk, I signed up for Twitter and I created the at iDaisyShu account, um, but I actually never really used it because I didn't really... Um, I, I didn't really, I was too distracted by my, my research and my experiments that I didn't really engage via Twitter. Right. And yeah. It was surprising. And it wasn't until, um, until last year, the beginning of last year, when I started talking to a lot of people, some of the, um, some of the early career researchers who were already, uh, postdocs, um, and I attended, um, an event called, um, I think it was something to do with social media um, and it was run by Franklin Women, um, a group in uh, Sydney that promotes um, women in science. Oh, and, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. And that actually, um, that was something, one of my first posts about uh, attending that event. And then uh, from there, I actually uh, found a lot of friends who were very active on Twitter. Um, and from there, I, I became someone who posted um, quite frequently. Uh, but for Instagram, it wasn't until last year in October, having been inspired by some of my lab mates, that I started my own Instagram account. I, I previously just had personal Instagram. Um, right, of course. All the benefit in um, that. And it was also inspired by the um, Arvo webinar that you uh, were a part of. Oh, I love that. Um, yeah, yeah, on social media. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get onto this. Um, <laughs> frame. Now, um, the social media account that your lab mates run, uh, was that the, kind of like a group effort or was that one, one or two people that were, were working on that? 
we, we had a lab specific one, so everyone had the password for that. Um, but my friend had a spin-off one. Um, she's actually uh, Taylor Wishart, who's at My Life in the Lab. Um, on oh, Instagram. okay. Yeah, absolutely. And so she had her own um, personal one where she shared her um, research journey. And I thought that was an excellent idea to have my own spin-off one. Um, so in addition to my lab one, which was shared, um, I thought it was nice to have that personal touch. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that I think that people really connect with people who are trying to share science stories and talk about what life is actually like in a lab. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so what's your favorite social media platform? Now, it sounds like you started on Twitter and then joined Instagram to talk about your research. Which is your favorite? Um, I would have to say that I really appreciate both of those uh, platforms in different ways. So with Twitter, it's all about... Um, it's more to do with sharing links and retweeting, which is made really simple on Twitter. And it's not as easy to do that on Instagram. Very so can, true. Yeah, you can repost, but it's, it's almost like, um, it's, it's almost like nicer to have your own images um, on Instagram. And um, when I do share or repost, it's typically an Insta story that I would do that, that in. Something um, that's temporary and that people will kind of exactly. click on and actually maybe go look at the, at the the thing you're talking about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, I use them for different purposes. Uh, with Instagram, I find it's definitely more visually fun and engaging mm -hmm. with videos and photos. So that is something like I feel like a lot of people would gravitate towards easily. And Twitter, on the other hand, is I feel like something that a lot of the older academics seem to use more. So I find like I engage with um, more uh, postdocs and um, professors via Twitter and I engage more with PhD students or uh, early sort of postdocs via Instagram. Oh, that's really interesting. So yeah. yeah, there is there is a bit of an age divide. I wonder if it's um, about the visual aspect of Instagram. I've heard people saying that they're they're nervous about like taking their own photos or they don't think that they're like a photographer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things that I like about Instagram is that like there's all sorts of new things now like um, polls and uh, and uh, things to engage in stories like music that aren't just visual. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, really exciting. Um, I haven't actually tried those uh, the music option, but that is something really nice to add to Instagram. Yeah, I mean, it's brand new. So I think um, people are still testing it out and seeing how it works, but it's a, it's a cool new feature, definitely. So what types of ways do you usually engage with your followers? So you said that you um, tend to share links on Twitter and share more visual stuff on Instagram, but how do you engage with the people who follow you, your audience? Um, on Instagram, when I, wanna, when I wanna get more engagement, I typically try to, um, I try to ask questions in my posts um, and hoping people will reply. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and on Twitter, it's more, it's typically more like um, more posts that someone will end up retweeting or replying mm -hmm. to or commenting, but I haven't really um, used questions much on Twitter. Um, it seems to create more hype when you do have uh, a post that is interesting. Um, not Something that like sparks conversation. Yeah, exactly. So not, not so much uh, direct questions, but rather just um, actually uh, creating uh, something, uh, sharing a link that's uh, really interesting or uh, a quote, and that will spark engagement itself. Um, whereas on Instagram, um, people sometimes comment, but um, usually it's more engaging to specifically ask a question. Yeah, absolutely. So what advice would you give to a new researcher or academic who's thinking about joining social media? I, um, I would have to say that uh, create an account um, now, uh, like as soon as possible, because then you can uh, hopefully get the name that you really want. Um, and it's all about just not delaying it. Sometimes I, I feel like it's really easy just to sit on it and be like, okay, I'm going to really plan this out um, thoughtfully and carefully and kind of create um, the, inst the perfect Instagram or Twitter feed that encapsulates myself. 
but the more you sit on it, I feel like, and I felt I did that with my Twitter um, when I, I actually started it in mm-hmm. 2015. And I didn't really engage and, and post things until 2017. So I felt like um, the thing is just to start and through starting, it's um, you'll, you'll develop um, your own sort of feed uh, very organically and you'll meet other people and they will inspire different sorts of posts. Um, and it's only through actually doing it that um, you can actually learn exactly what uh, social media is all about. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Just doing it is uh, is really great advice. I know. I know for myself, uh, I was private on social media for a very long time, and one day I just decided, okay, well, I'm gonna try not doing that, and uh, took all of my accounts public, and uh, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> it was surprising. Yeah, it's really great to um, hear from people uh, that you don't know who are really interested in your work. So. Yeah, yeah really sometimes cool. it's sometimes it can really spark fun conversations and like even collaborations. I love that um, social media can really connect people. Yeah, yeah, it really can. The the last thing that I wanted to ask you about is uh, your experience crowdfunding your research. I noticed that you had raised some money to help support your lab research uh, in the past, and I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I um, crowdfunded. Um, my PhD project, which was really exciting, was actually part of the Arvo Science Communication Training Program, where we had to uh, do our own outreach assignment. And um, there were a lot of different um, ideas and uh, people in my cohort uh, did other things like hosting a, um, a lab day where uh, patients who had the disease that they were studying would come over and uh, they'd show them the sort of uh, experimental side of what was um, happening. Mm-hmm. Into research and that was a really cool idea so um but i decided to do mine completely online um through crowdfunding and um and that actually um was a very interesting experience me creating a video that encapsulated exactly what my research was but directed towards a very very general audience right yeah and that was quite a challenge in itself because i had only really kind of written um, yeah, more scientific things about my uh, research. So that was a good learning experience for me. Um, it's, yeah, great outreach and uh, practice talking to a really public audience and explaining to them, like justifying why, why money is important to help this particular project. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like we were very specific about where the money would be going, uh, what reagents we would um, be purchasing. And, and it was amazing to find that um, some people who were suffering from cataracts were very keen on donating to me and they were actually strangers. So I was really wonderful. Wow. How did you, how did you share that once you had um, written up the, um, the call for funds? How did you, did you share that on social media? Yes. Yeah. I, that actually, that was an interesting one where I found that the most effective form um, to engage with people was probably via, um, Facebook, which was my personal Facebook account, but I found that uh, that was actually a bit more engaging. Um, and Facebook is something that I haven't really um, utilized as much. And that's something I'm going to uh, be looking into in the future. But I found that Facebook was actually more effective for my crowdfunding in generating um, more um, engagement. And, but I did share it on Instagram and Twitter, and I made sure to um, post at least probably about once a week, just, just so I could catch everybody and not miss any potential donators. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, that was a good experience. And I also tried via, um, email. That was another form of connecting with others and telling people about it. So it sounds like sharing widely and sharing multiple times so that, uh, your audience can definitely hear it. Some people aren't on social media or checking their email every day. So having it across platforms will really helps get your message out there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I love that. Thank you so much for coming to talk with me today about social media and your practices. Is there anything else that you would like to add or plug? Um, uh, I guess I'll, I'll plug my Instagram. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Everyone yeah, should yeah. check out your Instagram. It's so fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm always um, up for sort of conversations or comments. And I, I really... Um, 
like it when people engage with me. So uh, definitely uh, look out for my Instagram and Twitter at idaisyshoe. And yeah, and, and my, um, I just want to reiterate that everyone can do social media and that uh, you should just start ASAP. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, we look forward to seeing more from you in Boston. Yay. Yeah, I'm excited to share more things.